well, you know, like like you say, it was the height of the, the Vietnam era, and and us young kids were were doing the best we could. The only thing we knew how to do was to was to make noise and and try to bring an end to this foolishness, this mistake that was happening in Southeast Asia. And you know, I, I think we managed to do that. I think that that our generation was the you know we were the our, we were baby boomers in the you know, returning 18, 19, 20, that area, that area. And, uh, you know, there was a bunch of us and we all had the same, same ideas that this, this, this war was crazy and the war in general was crazy. And, and there were so many more peaceful things to do in, in this planet and, and in this world, in this short life that we have besides, you know, making war on people we didn't even know. I mean, it's, it, 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 it made no sense then it makes even less sense now. Mm, I love so, that. So what, so, so what was happening was that that music and culture in general was was being youth driven as it always is and always will be. Uh, you know, it, and and we were we were at the, the forefront of that. We were the spearhead of of that kind of protest and activism and uh, and and disgust and and frustration. And disgust. and and what, what do we, and, and and we yeah and we turn to we turn to love we we turn to to each other we we turn to to community we turn to cooperation we turn to all the good things that 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 were the opposite of what was happening in our names and but, you know to to our military from our uh, elected officials it's totally I, I you know I. I introed, uh, I was introing you for about a half hour, and I was speaking about LBJ's administration, uh, the 60s, the Tet Offensive, and, you know, live cameras going into the jungles of Vietnam and, you know, showing the people at, in America, you know, what was really happening. And, you know, by 1970, you know, Vietnam is in full swing. I, I, I believe it's 1971 is when Sunshine, I think, hits... The the mainstream, you know, take us back to to writing Sunshine. You know, where were you, and you know, how did you write each of those lines? Because those lines are impeccable. Well, thank you, thank you very much. I appreciate that compliment. My um, honor, sir. I let me give you a little background. I my, first of all, my dad was an was an ex FBI agent. You know, my adopted dad was an ex FBI agent working in DC in the Capitol building every day in the Senate office building every day, uh, at appropriating money from our from the tax from our taxes wow. for the defense bill. He, he was he was one of the staffers in charge of of putting all the figures together and, and saying yes or no to all the things that that uh, the Secretary of Defense at the time, was uh, was appropriating money for wanted wanted money to be appropriated for. So my dad was doing that. Wow. He was pretty authori- He was a pretty authoritarian guy, and uh, of course, I was anti-authority. Still am. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least I'm of at least I'm of the opinion that that authority should certainly be questioned, and uh, and that was happening. And then Nixon was president. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, you know, like you say, Vietnam was at the height of its of its uh, violence, and you know, Cambodia, the secret war in Cambodia. I mean, the, the list goes on and on. Yes. Uh, and I just sat down on the bed. I was frustrated with all of that, you know. And I sat down on the bed to write a song. And then I, I thought back to, wow, you know, <clears throat> I, I I just narrowly survived a pre-induction draft board physical. I, I just narrowly it survived it. I mean, I was ended up in the emergency room with stitches all over my body from uh, from the protest that I initiated at the draft board physical. Wow. <laughs> I, haven't told, I haven't told many people this, this story, but I'm, I'm writing about it in, in journal form, hopefully to be a book someday. Oh, man. But <clears throat> what happened? I just, I just didn't want to go, and I didn't want anybody else to go, and everybody, everybody wanted to go. You know, all, all, everyone of my age group, all the frat boys, all the jocks that, that were not, you know, aligned with us long hairs, uh, 
they all wanted to go. They were very excited about going to Southeast Asia and literally killing people. <laughs> that was, that, that was, you know, the, the people in the bus on the way to the physical, that's, that's all they were talking about, jumping up and down, about they, they couldn't wait to kill, you know, and then they'd use racial yes, uh, yes. slurs. Of course. So, <clears throat> And then I, you know, during the physical, I decided that I would uh, stage a little protest of my own, and if they wanted blood, I would, I would go ahead and give that to them. So I found a piece of, I crashed into a glass bookcase, and I got some glass, and I cut myself, and uh, got all those green uniforms soaked with, with red blood, and um, it, it was you know, quite a performance. I knew exactly what I was doing, even though I, I appeared to be you know, out of my mind. I appeared to be, I didn't want to go. And I would, and I would have done anything. I, I would have done anything to not go. I, I wanted to stay home and do my music and, and affect change from here, not from there. Yes. And, uh, and so I did. And they ended up beating me up and, you know, I, it's, it's it's too gruesome to go into really, but uh, that the jock, was it like the jock people, the jock guys were the was were the ones that beat you up? No, no, no. The the, the police. Wow. The, the the Ohio State Police and the uh, and the the army. You know the army sergeants and lieutenants and whoever else they had in there. Oh my going, gosh! Going through our underwear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. What do you, what do you think? Okay, so uh, my gen I'm 35 so, years. Sorry. No, that's okay. So th th that's the background with which I sat down on the bed and started thinking about, about what was happening in the world and, and started thinking about, hmm, you know, if, if maybe I could write a song that just sounded like a little happy, happy little song and, and, but yet drove home the message that, you know, sunshine, you know, it, it, it's a bad day today. I don't, I don't feel like dancing. I feel like, like telling people how I feel. I feel like, you know, I feel like railing against authority. I feel like questioning all the people that are telling us what to do. Oh, and so yes. I did. <laughs> oh. And and there are very few people, actually, that re who really got that. But I, among them, most of the people that got that song really truly took it home to their hearts were Vietnam veterans. Mm. And, and, mm. and people of my age who were facing that incredible, you know, enforced, enforced, in, in inscription into the uh, into the armed services, you know we didn't have any choice. That was that was what you had to do. We'd be arrested.